My name's Ian Crawford. All right, and what do you, where do you work? I uh, work at Birkbeck College in the University of London in the UK, where I study planetary science and astrobiology. Are we alone in the universe? I think we don't know whether we're alone at the universe, in the universe at the moment. You um, think we don't know, or you know we don't know? No, I, well, I think we know we don't know, right? <laughs> it's a known, a known unknown. We, we know that we don't currently know whether we're alone in the universe. And the whole science, this new science of astrobiology, is really the science of finding out whether we are alone or not. And I think we have no, well, we do have no definite answer to that question yet. And when I asked you the question, are we alone, what did you understand by the word we? So I took that to mean life. Now, obviously, there's a whole spectrum of possibilities here from uh, life per se, which could be very simple or relatively simple, because actually I don't think any life is simple, uh, relatively simple microorganisms through to much more complicated multicellular animals to intelligent species and civilizations and technological civilizations. There's a whole spectrum there, but the truth is we don't know whether any of that exists currently, um, and so it's astrobiology's job to try and find out. Well, if you have a continuum, a one-dimensional continuum, you have a right and a left side. And if we are somewhere yeah, well, here, then there's right. something to the right of us. Yes, plausibly. Well, that's to be determined. I mean, I think it would be like a continuum of complexity, right? Not only a continuum of life, but a continuum of complexity, increasing complexity through time. Only I always understood that we're only talking about locally, and the entropy in the whole universe has to increase and all of that, but locally, right, a continuum okay. of increasing complexity. Well, yeah. locally means, let's say, on the planet Earth, or no, the planet the, Mars, or the planet... But, but there are two... Just, distinct concepts here. One is low entropy, the other is complexity. Now, which do you mean? Well, I was thinking, I was thinking in terms of uh, complexity, which is why I used the word. The question, are we alone in the universe, is it an important question? I think if, you, if, it, if it means, so, so, so you use the word we then, so when you use the word we in the question, what did you have in mind? Whatever you want, it's for you. <laughs> no, no, well, you're asking the question. No, I'm, uh, well, the, the question should really be posed, um, does it, if there are complicated systems at the level of bacteria in the universe, does it matter? If there are extraterrestrial civilizations building starships in the universe, does it matter? Because there, because there is this range of possibilities. Well, I actually think all of those things matter. <laughs> so the answer to your question is, yes, it does matter. Um, but it also matters... Um, Except if you want to define hurricanes as life, then it doesn't matter as much to you. So it wouldn't... It wouldn't no, I wouldn't say it wouldn't matter as much to me. I mean, if I was an atmospheric scientist, it would probably matter more to me. I'd be more interested in finding hurricanes on Jupiter or Mars or Alpha Centauri, some planet of Alpha Centauri or something, because, because, because you know, I study hurricanes. But, 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 but since, since I'm an astrobiologist, at least in part, then sort of my interest is finding things that are alive. So, but that, that doesn't mean that life is... Um, in, in, in itself necessarily more important than any other physical phenomenon. Ex with the caveat that you can make the argument life, because of its complexity and its potential, its tra transformative potential for where it, you know, environments where life establishes itself, does seem to have enormous potential to transform the world around it from, from a state that it was prior to the appearance of life. So this, this I, th I, c I could make the case that this does make life actually of universal significance. In order to have any sort of sort of sensible discussion about probabilities of life in the universe, <laughs> we should at the very least be restricting ourselves to our observable horizon within the universe, right? And that's not infinite. Because we can have no knowledge, in principle, as far as I know, we okay. can have no knowledge of what's going on okay. beyond, the, beyond, the, beyond the horizon of the observable universe. So speculating about it, yeah, you can put it in the same category as other universes within the multiverse, or multiverses within a bigger multiverse. Or you can have all of these, all these possibilities, and they, they, may be, um, they may be real for all I know, but they're beyond our ken, and they probably always will be beyond our ken. So from a practical consideration of searching for life in the universe, we should really be restricting ourselves to the observable universe. So, so let's say we had a prob we could figure out the probability of intelligent life, and it was um, it was small enough that we should would not expect it to be in our observable universe, but it was large enough so it would be in beyond our observable universe. Let's say we could we knew that, would we be alone or not? Well, effectively. 
Okay, thanks, William. I think that's all you can say, isn't it? Because you could you could raise the question, suppose there was a multiverse, and the multiverse has an infinite number of universes in it, and they might all be infinitely big. And are we alone or not? Well, in one sense, no, there are all these multiverses. But but in but in another sense, then in since we can have no knowledge of them, we can't prove the existence of life in these multiverses, we can't communicate with them. Then effectively, I mean, it's an interesting philosophical, if you don't like the word metaphysical, it's an interesting no. philosophical discussion, right? It's a bit like how many angels can you have dancing on the head of a pin, right? Well, we could ask but, whether but, the but, universe but, is alone. And, and scholastic philosophers in the Middle Ages got really hung up on this question, right? God's are, are omnipotent, can you make it? How many angels can you? Yeah, but it's a nonsensical. It's not. It's not nonsensical. You can formulate it. How many? How many angels can God have dancing on the head of a pin? But it's just not. It's just not for practice. For a practical point of view of us as scientists trying to understand the universe it's not really helpful on the other hand the observable universe i'll come back to this if i may because within the observable universe we can make progress here because it is although we do not know the answer we don't know whether the probability of evolving life on a planet like the earth or a planet like the earth was four billion years ago we don't know whether that probability is about one like frank drake used to think that it probably still does think that it is or whether it's whether it's really small but we can find out because we can address this empirically, right? We can start exploring the universe, identifying planets that were like what the Earth was like four billion years ago, and then we can see: do they all? Does has life appeared on all of them? In which case, F subscript L in the Drake equation is about one. Well, or, or, or suppose we, we, we examine a thousand of them. And, and none of them have life, despite the fact they were like what the Earth was like when life arose here, then, then that's pushing you to think that F subscript L is somewhere like 10 to the minus 3. So we can address this empirically, but it requires us to get out into the universe and explore it. 